Sometimes when I walk down the street and see a tree standing alone, I wonder how it was when there was many. I also wonder how it was for the Coast Salish people and what their experience was as their land became more and more occupied with foreign people and numerous buildings. Kitsilano was a thriving village before, but now it's an isolated beach amidst a bustling city. The same with Stanley Park. There used to be longhouses. People used to harvest shellfish. Now look at those places high traffic tourist areas and prime retail locations. This is how I make the days roll by. This is how I make the days roll by. This is how I make the days roll by. In Vancouver, there are natives from many territories. However, Vancouver is unique in the way that there are First Nation reserves within the city limits, such as the Burrard, Capilano and Musqueam Reserves. Oh, it's changed. It's changed a lot. Um, I grew up in Ostlahan, which is down the road from here. And uh, my early days were fishing. I mean, the salmon were running, you know, through our creeks in those days. The beach was really nice. We'd go down there on Sunday and have a picnic on the on the waterfront and bake clams and cook crabs and that. No, we can't. It's all contaminated. But we used to have, uh, all the kids, we used to have trails that were back there and they called it the pit. It was like a big maze, it just went everywhere. There used to be a creek back there and a small little lagoon and it just all got torn down um, for houses and it's still being developed for housing. For many Native people, the process of urbanization is closely linked to that of colonization. Not only has there been an attempt to assimilate Native people in the form of cultural genocide, but urban settings have created a sense of disconnection to the land, which is closely linked to our traditions and spiritual practices. With the city here, growing up in this city, and I see it with a lot of my friends and family, it's almost a, it's put this like spiritual filter on us. Um, because we're in the concrete jungle and it's the spiritual connection to the land is a lot harder to do when you're inside um, a place with concrete everywhere and roads and airplanes and fire trucks and ambulance and helicopters. A lot of indigenous populations were colonized, they were silenced, they were told not to speak their languages and not to communicate in the ways that they traditionally did which was through their gathering spaces and all, through their storytelling and all that kind of stuff and so people have been censored and pushed in through residential schools, trying to learn ways that were not their own. It's hard out there, you know, it's really hard. And it's especially, you know, when you don't have a foundation of your identity or where you come from. I think it's so, it's too easy for, you know, young Aboriginal people to slip through the cracks. And so, that's what ended up happening, you know, that's, that's what happened to me. I slipped through the cracks a little bit. But it's hard. It's hard being um, a Native organization in the city. I mean, we're in the downtown core. We've got an alley right next to Redwire where people are shooting up and using drugs and yelling and, like, feeling a lot of pain, you know? And we're not used to, like, personally, like, I'm not used to working and living, like, in a concrete space. And it's hard to be so far away from your own culture and like open space and trees and clean water and stuff like that and I think sometimes it's really easy to get ungrounded. In many cities across Turtle Island, First Nations peoples have relocated to urban settings for social and economic reasons. And also one of the things too with a lot of the, the um, families moving into the city, mm -hmm. they were moving because of services, they didn't have services on their reserves so in order to get um, 
better education or medical services, they moved into Vancouver and got totally lost in the in the area. We get a lot of letters and a lot of feedback of people that are just so um, heartened when they pick up Redware. They're like, oh my God, I'm, I'm not alone. You know, other people feel the same way that I do. And I'm not um, in the corner of some city somewhere thinking that I'm the only one facing these things. Other people are feeling this way too. Unlike in the past when our cultures and spiritual practices were prohibited, Indigenous people have begun to reclaim their identity and express their cultures in diverse and different ways. I think uh, the culture has a lot to do with uh, keeping us more satisfied with who we are, and that's very important. If we're not happy with who we are, then we have a tendency to go off and try to be something else. But when I finally snapped out of it, right, and decided that, you know, whatever, drinking and partying or whatever wasn't for me anymore. Mm -hmm. And so whatever, I got help, right? And I just refocused, you know, on my own life. And this was always there for me. And it was, you know, it, it's in my family, there's maybe five or six really, really awesome carvers, right? Mm -hmm. And so, I had a base of a foundation to work from too. My own family have we put on our own ceremonies, our own burnings, our own um, namings for feasts, celebrations. Just getting together like that because our family was so important. Those things again make me feel more connected to what we are. Not only are people individually creating spaces for traditional and cultural expressions. Native youth are now directly involved in programming. The Knowledgeable Aboriginal Youth Association has been on the scene since 2002. They have been involved in various community initiatives, dealing with youth engagement, as well as hosting many other cultural and community events. Redwire Native Youth Media Society has been involved in community organizing since 1997 and is the first Native youth magazine to be published and distributed nationally. Redwire Native Youth Media Society is a community of young Native people, um, mostly in Vancouver, but we have other people that we work with outside of here, that are interested in creating a space that is uncensored to talk about a variety of things that affect Aboriginal youth. So we, mostly what we do is we put out a quarterly magazine with all Native youth artists and all Native youth writers and we try to promote self-expression because we believe that with our stories and the way that we communicate with each other that we can um, build healthier lives for ourselves if we can be honest instead of being like in a lot of other media sources where things are censored and things are portrayed through stereotypes we try to break those down and create something that is um, realistic to us that is actually the way that we see the world Our dance group name is Spakwa Slolom in the Squamish language translated Eagle Song Dancers. Our mission is to present our culture and uh, to bring awareness that we're alive and well and our culture is, um, is active. shall convey to the world that our people are still alive and well. It is definitely a safe haven for me, I guess. Mm -hmm. To have to have a you know, to have a space to, you know, practice my culture. It's being part of freedom. It's part being part of like the freedom to speak however you feel and whatever you want. And I think initially um, when I got involved, I found that kind of frightening, and I think a lot of people do. It's like oh, they've never been given just free space to say however they feel, however they want. Um, and because we have this history of being told that the way that we feel is is wrong, or that it's not the it's savage, or it's it's um, inferior way of viewing the world, um, that it's almost like this barrier you get beyond because you you're paving your own way. It's like this total black void. You've never explored that part of you before. But it's exciting and it's so rewarding um, 
just thinking about like, the blank page of the stuff that we create and we just do it as we go and we say however we're feeling and just have faith that other people are feeling the same way too. This is how I make the days roll by. This is how I make the days roll by. This is how I make the days roll by. This is how I make the days roll by. This is how I make the days roll by. This is how I make the days.